have that summation of natural log multiplied by x. We only have summation of 1, i, i squared, i cubed. Done. That's all we have. We have summation of 1, summation of i, summation of i squared, and summation of i cubed. I don't have any of this. They're not here. So this I cannot calculate, but this I can. Since we see this problem here till you find another that we want to work on, let's take a look at this. So first of all, on 0 to 3, the function has to be continuous. Well, this product, this is continuous, this x. And what about this? Well, at 0 is 0. So 1 plus x squared has to be greater than 0, and it is. So then I will continue using a substitution. Can anyone come up with a substitution and see if we can do this? 1 plus x squared. Right. If du is in the problem, then I'm in business. If it's not in the problem, then I'll say, uh-oh, what do I do? Well, it is. Multiplying by 2 and divided by 2 never hurt anyone. So then I have the 2x with dx. And then I have natural log of this. And I will have to stop because we don't know integration by parts. So this is the integral from natural log u du. If you copy 0 to 3, you can get full credit. That will be a tragedy. So when the lower limit for x is 0, what do I copy for u? 1. Perfect. When the upper limit is 3 for x, what do I copy for u? Ten. That's it. And we have to stop and wait till calc 2 to continue with this one. Something called integration by parts. Okay, perfect example. Thank you so much. It was a good one. Okay, anything else you would like to work on? So the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2 is included in the definite integrals. And the substitution, of course. Now, do we want to look at part 1? The anti-differentiation is very clear, but we can look at other examples of this. What would you like to continue with? Would you like to continue with part one? Um, which part, or maybe it wasn't even a part, are we going to have any um, finding the derivative? Yes, that's what it is. So part yeah, one. Let's do that. So part one gives us a function, let's say g of x is the integral from 2x cubed to the square root of x from arctangent x multiplied by x squared. So this is a function It's given in the form of an integral. We are only asked to find g prime of x. What is the preparation for that? Because it requires some steps. Um, we need to divide the integration yes. into... Yes, yes. The yeah. interval of integration, yes. Perfect. The interval of integration has to be split from 2x cubed to the square of x. Of course. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. What if I just start from scratch? I need t in there. I need another letter. I can't use that. So instead of wasting the time, I'm going to copy it. So g of x, the integral from 2x cubed to the square of x, t squared arctangent t dt. Yes, and you already told me what to do with this.
Perfect. So you can put whatever number you like. I'm going to put a triangle. What next? Uh, is there any reason that number can't be zero? It or can be any anything number? you want. Okay, just checking. So the triangle can be anywhere between negative infinity to infinity. Anything you want. It can be a letter. You can say, I don't like this delta <laughs> or triangle that you want. I want A. Okay. As long as it's not X or T. Good. What next? Can I... Invert the first yes, aspect. yes, because the lower limit has to be a number. Awesome. And when we do that, we change the symbol in front. Change the sign. Full stop. Now G prime is ready for differentiation. Awesome. Well done. So let's differentiate the first one. I forgot to mention that. So can anyone differentiate for us? I think it's t squared r tangent or x. I'm forgetting right now. That's okay. If we keep the original and it will have to differentiate the upper right limit. so we'll eventually will multiply by 6x squared perfect but what do I have inside I think it has to be x squared or tangent x we have to plug in this instead of t that's why we differentiate because we have to plug it in and then differentiate it so 2x cubed squared and Who's at the grade, boy? <laughs> so 2x squared squared, arctangent 2x cubed times 6x squared plus the square root of x squared, arctangent the square root of x times the inner function prime. So the upper limit so t, or whatever variable we have, in this case t, has to be replaced by that expression that ultimately, at the end, has to be differentiated. If it's just plain x, then you don't have to write anything because x prime is 1. So then the same thing here. I replace t by the square root of x, but I have to square it. That's why I get x arctangent of the square root of x, and now because this is not plain x, if it were, I would have not written anything because plain x prime is 1. But when I differentiate the square root of x, I get 1 over 2 the square root of x. And this is it. You're not asked to do anything else. Yes, I could square this if you want to further simplify it. So this is 4x to uh, the sixth times this. Right, so this is 4x to the 6. Copy the base, multiply the exponents. So 4 times 6, negative 24, because there is a minus in front. x to the 6 times x to the second power is x to the 8. Arc tangent to x to the 3rd. And then plus x, x over 2 the square root of x. Better. Arc tangent uh, the square root of x. You can simplify. I have a square root of x at the top. Good. Any questions on this problem? So this was fundamental theorem of, of, of calculus part one. So this is done. So this we applied it many times. Upper, upper limit minus the lower limit, right? The function, the antiderivative evaluated at b minus evaluated at a. Um, so we have properties of definite integrals. Uh, we want uh, anti-differentiation, if you want, and the total distance.
I think total distance is the only one that we would have word problems for, right? Um, pretty much. Um, but you will have word problems from the other sections. Right, okay. Yeah. So what would you like to continue with? We can do a, a total distance word problem. Okay, so um, we had a homework for today. Uh, can you tell me what the function was so we can work on that? I did not write solutions yet. Yeah, I can pull it up just a second. This is 5.5, right? I can find it. I think it's number 72. Okay. I just, I just got to it. Acceleration. Uh, the function is a of t equals 2t plus 3. Um, b of 0 is negative 4. And the interval of 0 to 3. Okay. And we want the total distance on 0 to 3. Uh, do they ask us for... Uh, no, these are velocity questions. They're giving the acceleration, asking for velocity, and then the distance traveled during the time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the distance. Good. So, uh, for the velocity, they're, they're not asking us to find the um, displacement on this one. Correct. No okay. So, V of t will be 2t squared over 2 plus 3t plus a constant c. which is t squared plus 3t plus c. So uh, they're giving us a v of, uh, what did you say, v of something equals, I didn't write it. v of 0 equals negative 4. Thank you so much. So this is given so we can find c. So 0, 0, c equals negative 4. Because v of 0 equals negative 4 means negative 4 equals 0, 0, c. So then c equals negative 4. So then the velocity is t squared plus 3t minus 4. Perfect. I will also like to determine the uh, displacement I know because we may be asked on the final exam to determine the displacement. So I, I just want to determine both. So, so this was number one. Now for the velocity. Number two, displacement. The displacement is only the integral from 0 to 3 from v of t dt. So we get uh, t to the third over 3 plus 3t three squared over 2 minus 4t from 0 to 3. Okay, so you wrote displacement. Did you mean distance or are we doing that? No, no. I just wanted to show the displacement as well. Oh, okay. And number 3, yes, number 3 will be total distance. Okay, okay. It's only because this problem doesn't ask for the displacement, but maybe a problem on the final exam will ask for the displacement. So I, I just added that in. So when I plug in 3, 27 divided by 3 is 9. Uh, 27 plus 27 over 2. And then minus 12. As you know, this could be negative. So this is uh, negative uh, 3 plus 27 over 2. What was the measurement unit? Is it in feet per second or meter? Uh, meters in second squared was the acceleration. Yes, meters. yes, good. good. So um, this is negative 6, so 21 over 2 meters. Now the total distance equals the integral from 0 to 3, but from the absolute value of the velocity. So this is the integral from 0 to 3 from the absolute value of t squared plus 3t minus 4 dt. Stop.
and work on the function without the absolute value first. We cannot continue. So we have, uh, this is my page 10, the absolute value of t squared plus 3t minus 4. That is two options. Can anyone give us the two options here? What are the two options? When the function is negative and when the function is positive. Plus 3t minus 4 greater than or equal to 0. Or the opposite, t squared plus 3t minus 4, when t squared plus 3t minus 4 is less than 0. Which I will never solve, because whatever I don't get here, it will be here. Don't waste your time. So we solve this first inequality, and the only one actually. t squared plus 3t minus 4 greater than or equal to 0. We have to factor this. If it's not factorable, I have to find a solution somehow. Sorry about that. How do I turn this off? Okay, it's off. How do we factor this? I need two factors here. If it's not factorable, as I was saying, then we have to find the solutions with the calculator. Somehow, quadratic formula, yada, yada. T plus 4, T minus 4. Yes, t plus 4 and t minus 1. Perfect. So now, remember I showed one method. I can show another method of solving quadratic inequalities. Okay. One other method would be, you notice that this is a positive leading coefficient, which means the function, if you were to graph it, it would look like this. Obviously, it will cross at t equals negative 4 and at t equals 1. Where is this function positive? Well, it's positive here and here because it's above the x-axis. And it's negative here, so positive, positive, and negative. So then the absolute value of t squared plus 3t minus 4 is t squared plus 3t minus 4 for t between negative infinity and negative 4. But since we're talking about time, but I want to show the whole thing, so because the numbers may not be negative 4 and 1. So um, x in the interval negative infinity, negative 4, union 1 to infinity. Do not solve the other one. It would be a waste of time, because the other one is right here, between negative 4 and 1, with parentheses, of course, not brackets. So the negative 4 is irrelevant because we are looking at 0 to 3. But it's not necessary that that's the case. Okay, But we, we see that at 1, something happens. So between 0 and 1, between 0 and 1, I would be using this function. And between 1 and 3, I would have to use this function. So the total distance will be a, a sum of two integrals. We are on the interval 0 to 3. So 0 to 1 from this and from 1 to 3 from this. So let's stop for a moment and discuss this. All, this, all these steps that you've seen here are only to tell us or to discover where the function breaks and which intervals I have to use. So for this one, I will be using the interval 0 to 1. But for this one, the interval 1 to 3. Yes, from this moment on is a piece of cake, right? Because we can determine this very quickly. Negative t cubed over 3 minus 3 t squared over 2 plus 4t from 0 to 1 plus t cubed over 3, 3t three squared over 2 minus 4t from 1 to 3. Luckily, I only have to plug in 1 because all of these are polynomial. I mean, this is a polynomial. When I plug in 0, I get 0. But here I have to plug in both to get the total distance. 
کمیسی همام 